growing in the Spirit. As we continue to read from St. Paul's letter to the Corinthians, we begin to see what it means to be in the Spirit as against simply dwelling in the natural. Like we read yesterday, to have the Spirit of God is to know the mind of God and penetrate deep realities that are beyond the reach of ordinary human reasoning and unless one is in the Spirit, these deep spiritual truths will sound like foolishness to him or her. Now the question is, how do I grow in the Spirit? Or how do I develop my spiritual eye so as to penetrate the mind of God? The way to grow in the Spirit is through an awareness of the presence of God in our everyday life. It is a conscious and deliberate effort on our part to see the hand of God around us, within us and inside other people who we meet on a daily basis. To grow in the Spirit is to develop a sense of God. It is having a living fear of God rising out of the realization of His actual presence right here right now. The difference between the natural man and the spiritual man is that while the natural man finds it difficult to see the hand of God at work in his daily life, the spiritual man is always conscious of God's presence. For the natural man, things happen out of mere coincidence but for the spiritual man, God is always working things out. For the natural man, God is far away in heaven and does not care about what is happening here, but for the spiritual man, God is really here. For the natural man, life is meant to be enjoyed and as long as people are not watching, sin is allowed but for the spiritual man, there isn't such a thing as a secret because God is always watching and because he has the fear of God, he makes frantic efforts to live above sin. For the natural man, people are stars because they have talents and abilities but for the spiritual man, people are what they are because God is working through them as such there is no need to envy or be jealous of other people. This was the problem of the Corinthian church, there was envy and rivalry in their midst because they were very much in the natural. There was division in their midst, some said I am for Paul, others were saying I am for Apollos. They were blind to see that both Paul and Apollos were simply men empowered by the Spirit, simply God's co-workers. One way to know if you are very much in the natural is when you examine your conscience and notice the presence of envy. Envy is a feeling of hatred for others because they are able to do things which you cannot do or have talents which you do not have. The cure for envy is a realization that all human beings are essentially the same, that all human beings are essentially equal, that all human beings are essentially made of flesh and blood, that it is the spirit that makes the difference. The cure for envy is an awareness that you are capable of also doing things which other people cannot do if only you are open to be used by the Spirit of God. The cure for envy is never to look at other people like gods but to see the hand of God at work in them and give God glory rather than give worship to ordinary human beings. These days, we see Christians running from one church to another looking for this pastor or that priest who is, to use the word, powerful. When God answers their prayers, they give the credit to the man of God rather than their own faith and they worship the man of God as if without him, God would never have answered their prayers. Even the man of God in question becomes proud and carries himself like a king with bodyguards and armored vehicles. He makes a fortune out of the predicament of his church members and begins to fly on private jets. When God answers the prayer of the people, he takes credit to himself and they bless him with heavy thanksgiving. But when prayers are not answered, he puts the blame on the people saying they did not pray well or they did not pray according to his specification. So either case, the man of God wins. Like the Corinthian church were making distinction between Paul and Apollos, Christians today compare their priests with one another forgetting that it is the same Holy Spirit working in them giving to each separate gifts according to how he pleases. For instance, I am able to send these reflections on a daily basis not because I am in any way better than other priests who do not but simply because this is the area the Spirit of God has decided to use me. And other priests who are not doing this are in no way less than I am or without the Spirit of God. There should be no envy and rivalry among the Christian fold if we go above the natural. 
Jesus having left the synagogue went to the house of Simon where he cured his mother-in-law of fever and when news of his arrival reached the town, they brought so many sick people to him and even those possessed by demons and he cured them all. As soon as it was dark, he went to a quiet place all by himself to pray, an acknowledgement that it was by the power of the Spirit he was able to work great miracles. Jesus would always go to a quiet place to pray as a sign of humility to refuel from the Spirit. Today we celebrate the memorial of St. Gregory the Great. He is called great not because of his personal talents or abilities but because of the fact that the Holy Spirit used him to do great work in the church especially in the aspect of the liturgy of the Mass and Office. Let us pray, send down your Spirit O Lord and renew the face of the earth. Transform us by your Spirit that we may do exploits in your name O Lord. May your Holy Spirit enlighten our path and lead us to your will. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Good morning. Be happy. Have faith. Live positive. It is well with you.